Bonjour, my name is Serge Germany. I'm a French photographer living in Paris and welcome to episode number seven of my Lightroom Photoshop and photography tips. Last week we looked at a new feature in Lightroom 4.1 where we took three photos. As you can see here, that's the normal exposure, that's the underexposure, and that's the overexposure. And we blend it using Photoshop and Lightroom and that's the result that we got. It's a great new feature. If you have not watched last week's episode, I invite you to do so. This week, we are going to do manual blending using layers in Photoshop. Basically, I'm going to take this normal exposure and this underexposure and using a few tricks, we're going to blend it to get this result in Photoshop. It's a way of doing HDR which is a lot more natural. It's harder than just using Photomatics or the HDR function in Photoshop but it gives a lot more natural result. So let's get to it and let me show you how we do this. Hello, mesdames et messieurs, ladies and gentlemen. So today we're gonna to do a special tutorial on HDR, but not the standard HDR by using a software like Photomatix or even the HDR engine in Photoshop. We're gonna do uh, manual blending. Now, why uh, would you do manual blending? Because uh, manual blending takes a bit of time. It's, it's not easy to do. I'll show you a simple workflow where you can do it. I took the three photos on a tripod. So this is a normal exposure. This is the underexposure, and this is the overexposure. The thing is with this photo is that I had to do it in HDR because if you look at the normal photo, the sky is completely blown out. Even I'm in Lightroom, even if I lower down the exposure, um, I, I don't have as much detail that I have uh, in this photo than I have in the underexposed photo. And I wanted to go for a look which is a bit more natural than the HDR look. I, all I wanted was to get some more details in the sky. So this is how I do it. I work with Lightroom and I work with Photoshop. The first thing that I do is that I'm going to go onto the underexposed photo and I'm going to correct the white balance because it was, uh, I, I think I had the wrong white balance for this photo. So it's a bit too much blue when we had truly a sunset. So I'm going to first, and the reason I do it on the, on the, the underexposed photo is because that's the one where you have more detail in the sky. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my temperature to the right around, uh, yeah, 7,667, something like this. And I'm going to put my tint at uh, plus uh, 37 about just to give an overall uh, more uh, warm tone to the photo. Then I'm going to take my ND filter tool here. I'm going to go for exposure, which I'm already uh, on. I have an exposure which is minus 0 0.052. I'm going to make a filter here on the top. That's going to darken the sky. And then I'm going to use this new option in Lightroom 4 that I love, where I can just change uh, the temperature and the tint just on this tool here. It's only going to change it for the sky. So I'm going to just put my temperature to the right to make the sky a lot more yellow and a lot more uh, reddish. Uh, then I'm going to boost the saturation until I have the look I'm going for. Uh, maybe a bit more to the right, a bit more tint and lower the exposure. I really want to get this uh, I had a nice sunset at this time and the white balance took it out completely. Um, maybe a bit more saturation. Okay, so this is pretty good. Check it out before the, uh, uh, sorry, it's, this is here, before the ND filter, after the ND filter. So I really changed the overall feel uh, of, uh, of that sky here. Now the photo is still pretty dark, so I'm gonna open up the shadows a little bit so that it blends a bit better and I'm going to lower the highlights, not so much, but just about, yeah, somewhere like this until I've got the sky that I want. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so that's what I did on this one photo, on the underexposed photo. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to select this one and I'm going to click on sync and I'm going to synchronize all the settings so that on this photo, I have the exact same white balance. You cannot really see it because it's a lot you know, brighter, so the whole colors are out, but you know 
inside that you have the same white balance. Once I have these two photos uh, basically looking the way I want, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go into edit, open as layers in Photoshop. What this is going to do is going to open up Photoshop and put both of the file in the same Photoshop file with one layer on top and one under. So that's going to take you a little minute. Okay, here we are. So on the, on the top layer, we have the normal exposure and on the bottom, we have the uh, dark exposure. What I usually do, this is a little trick I'll give you. I put the under exposure over the uh, normal exposure. I unchecked uh, th this little eye so that you don't see it. I go on to the normal exposure and then I go into uh, select color range and I go for the highlights. What this does, when I click OK, if you look in white, it's what's selected. What it, this does is it's going to make a selection of the highlights. Basically, it's going to make a selection of whatever is the, you know, the, the brighter in the photo. So it's basically selecting the sky. Now, once I have that selection, I'm going to click on this view icon so that I can see that layer again. And I'm going to click, I have a selection, an active selection, I'm going to click on the mask. And ta-da! <laughs> we are done. No, we, not exactly. It's pretty ugly. But look what it did. It created a mask. Remember, a mask is the white reveals and the blacks stops. So, we, the, you know, the top of the mask is completely white because it was a selection of the highlights. So it's passing through the sky and it's blocking with the blacks the background. Now, you can see that the selection is very rough and it's pretty ugly. Now, unfortunately, uh, fortunately, we have... Um, this in the property panel, you know, you can go to windows and, um, and properties to make sure that panel is open. W when you click on the mask, the property panel changes and you have this new option called density and feather. And what this does, feather is basically going to blur my mask. Now look at this. If I go to the right with the feathering, first it's going to create some hollows because that's the, um, it's just blurring a little bit the mask. So that's pretty ugly. But if you keep on moving to the right, it's going to blend both exposure. You have to go really far, something like this. Check this out. It totally blurred my mask. And now I have a better uh, mix between the sun, I mean the sky and the, f and the foreground. Now I need to fix that a little bit. So for this, I'm going to click on the mask. I'm going to take a brush. Uh, make sure that my opacities are on 20. Make sure that I'm on white and I'm just going to paint uh, a little bit more on the sky to get some of the sky uh, back even more. You need to make sure that you're on the mask, which is the case here. Um, and the reason I do 20 by 20 is to really go, uh, you know, slow with this. I don't want to go too fast because if I do 100, look what happens. Uh, it's darkening it very fast. I want to, so I'm going to undo that. And I'm just, I take the opacity of 20, so I just press two on my keyboard and that puts the opacity at 20. And I'm just gonna bring back uh, some of the sky here. Now check this out, before, after. It did do good blending and it does it almost automatically. Uh, so that's kind of nice, I would say. Now that's just the basic uh, blending between the two photos. The thing is, uh, the photo now lacks of contrast. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to add some contrast. Now that I have blended both skies, so I just take a curve. And uh, let me open this up a little, little bit. And I'm just going to go into default, you know, the presets, and I take the medium contrast just to add some contrast to the photo. And it already looks a bit better. Uh, it's more saturated because when you add contrast, it adds saturation. And usually when I add a, a contrast curve, I always add one more, which is a, a curve just to brighten up the photo. Because usually what it does is when you contrast, when you do this medium contrast, it darkens the whole photo. Okay, so that's pretty much what I'm going for. Uh, one thing you can do a little trick is you can select both of this curve and you can just put it into a group and you call this contrast. So you have both curve into one group. And you can see the before and after of both curves, before 
after. Okay, so that's kind of better. Now, uh, sometimes I like to tweak the, the colors a little bit. So after the contrast, I go into selective color. And uh, uh, the way selective color works is that you can change all the colors in the photo. I usually go uh, on the presets, you have got all the colors. I mean, on a, not the preset, on the color picker, you've got the reds, the yellow, the greens. Choose neutrals. Because if you choose neutrals, when you're going to play with the sliders, it's going to affect the entire photo. So you can, you can just play around here. You have cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So that means when you go to the right, it's going to add cyan. And when you go to the left, it's going to add red. Because the you know cyan is to the right, magenta is to the right, yellow is to the right. Now, to the left, it's red, green, blue. Remember, RGB. So if I go to the left, it's going to add red. If I go to the right, it's going to add cyan. Now, what do I want to do? I want to maybe add a bit of more red to give it more you know, a better color cast. Then magenta. To the left, it's going to add some green. To the right, it's going to add magenta. Okay, maybe I can add a bit of magenta. Not so much. Uh, plus one. It's a very powerful tool. So you have to go, you know, just like minus two plus one. Not too much. Yellows. I'm going to add some yellows. Uh, I'm going to add some yellows to warm up the whole photo. Something like this. And one option that I love in this selective color is the last slider which is the blacks basically what it does when you're on neutrals is when you go right it adds contrast like it really adds contrast and saturation and i think this photo needs some more contrast and saturation so i kind of like that okay so that's before the correction that's after i just warmed up the whole photo to make it a bit you know a bit better and um now here you can see there's a bit of a hollow there. Uh, and the reason there is a bit of a hollow is because I have to uh, paint a bit more with white here. So I'm going to paint with white a little bit more. Uh, I'm still at 20%. Let's see if I can go a bit more. 80%. Yeah, I just want to darken the, the mountains here a little bit more. Maybe the top of the trees. Um, something like that uh, all right so yeah now we've got both photo blended we did the contrast and um, i think i'm going to brighten up this photo a little bit more so I, I take my i open up my contrast group i take my second curve which is the one that brights up everything i'm going to bright up everything just like that and then i'm going to do a vignetting effect uh, there's tons of ways to do vignetting effect but the one i like to do is to press um, control alt shift e that creates a layer where it's taking everything you've done so far and putting it into one layer so that's this one layer that's what it is i'm going to call this vignette okay and i'm going to put this layer into multiply which is going to darken the whole photo then i'm going to take the rectangle marquee tool and make a rectangle about this size Anything which is outside of the rectangle, I want this to be dark. Anything which is inside, I want it to be normal. But before I do anything, I need to feather that rectangle. Otherwise, it's going to make a clear cut selection. It's going to be ugly. So you go to filter, no, sorry, select, modify, feather. And I'm going to put 400 as a value. I want a big feathering. And then I press delete. And right away, you can see that it did a vignetting effect on the whole photo. It darkened the whole corner of the photo. If you find that the effect is too much, you can just lower a bit the opacity to make it more subtle, which, I, which is what I'm gonna do. And there's a lot more things you can do with the photo. You can do the sharpening and some dodge and burning. Let me do a bit of dodge and burning and a bit of sharpening. So uh, you can create a new blank layer that you call dodge and burn. You know, I always like to do a bit of dodge and burn. So uh, once you've created that layer, you just put it into overlay mode. You take a brush, which I already have of, of opacity of 15, for example. And uh, anything you want to brighten, you just brush on it. And it's going to brighten this part. Could be interesting to, you know, to uh, brighten up this part of the photo to make it more interesting. And on the opposite, if you press X and you go on the dark side of the force, uh, it's going to darken anything you paint on. So maybe you want to darken a bit the sky even more here. Uh, you know, check it out before the dodge and burn, after the dodge and burn. You know, just to make it a bit more interesting photo, I can press X to go back to go back to the whites. And, you know, maybe 
you know, brighten up this little village here and maybe press X on the other side to darken a little bit these mountains here. And uh, yeah, basically you can just play around. I like the idea of having some, uh, you know, high bright colors in the middle of the photo to drag the viewer eyes. Uh, maybe I'm going to do it even more. So I'm pressing X and maybe I'm going to brighten up this spot of the photo even more. I like that and maybe some of the trees here. And as always, if you find that the whole dodge and burn story is a bit too much, you can just lower the opacity of the layer. But for now, I'm going to leave it at 100%. Okay, and uh, last but not least, if I wanted to, you know, sharpen the whole photo, I can just press um, Command Alt Shift E. It's not Control Alt Shift E, by the way. It's Command Alt Shift E, which is going to create a layer, taking you know everything you've done so far, and we're going to call this Sharp. Okay, maybe you zoom in a little bit so you can see a bit more. And let's go to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. For this photo, I think I'm going to put a radius around 0.5. I like to have small radius and big amounts, like 120 or something. It makes like all the small details pop up. I like that. Maybe, right, yeah, something like this. Okay, so it's on, it's on its own layer, so you can see the before and after. I don't think you can see it on the video, it's pretty subtle. But you know, that's just one last finishing touch. Okay, so that's it guys. That's one way of blending photos, you know, using this little trick of the highlight selection that I wanted to show you this week. Okay guys, so before we head back to the studio, I just want to show you like every week that if you go on my website, photosearch.com, and you click on the App Store, this is where you can find all my training. Uh, you have basically a lot of Lightroom 4 courses and Photoshop CS5 and Photoshop CS6 courses. Uh, you can either buy individual courses, they cost $10 if you buy, if you click here on the download training, because you will get all the videos and the RAW files directly on your Mac or your PC. Or if you have an iPhone or an iPad, you can get a bit of a smaller version video for only $6. And you can also have packages where you can buy all my training for $56 or only Photoshop training for $34 and all the Lightroom 4 training for $26. So they're very cheap and uh, each training course is between one to two hours. You can get the raw files every time. And I'm also proud to announce that I have a new course that just came out. It's called Understanding Photography with Simple Words, which you can download. It's not yet on the iOS store but you can download it on your Mac or your PC. It's uh, a bit over an hour long. It's 14 videos where I try to explain all the basics of photography with simple words, which is the title of this training. If you know everything that there is to know about shutter speed, uh, AV mode, TV no, manual mode, this course is not for you. This is really for someone who wants to grasp and understand the basics of photography explained with no technical words. That's what I try to do. It was a bit of a challenge, but I'm pretty happy with it. So that's that. And just to finish up, if you're watching this video over on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can get weekly all those free videos. Well, thank you for listening and let's head back to the studio. All right, guys. So I hope you liked that tutorial. As I said, this technique is not as easy as using Photomatics or HDRFX Pro because, you know, it can be a bit uh, touchy to use layers in Photoshop, but I love the natural result that it gives. Now, this week's inspiration is a man that I love. His name is RC Concepcion. You can check out his website here, aboutrc.com. He's one of the Photoshop guy and member of the NAPP, you know, the Scott Kelby team. And uh, he has great tutorials on HDR. He did a great book uh, also on HDR with a lot of techniques showing you how you can take the same photos and blend them using Photomatics, HDR FX Pro from Nick Software, or Photoshop, and he also shows you all the post-processing on each photos. I love his work. Also, a little help I'm asking you, uh, if you can go on iTunes and leave a little review on this podcast, if you like it, it helps me getting this podcast known. Okay, thank you for following me, and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.